Uh, in order to be born, you needed two parents, four grandparents, eight great grandparents, 16 second great grandparents, 32 third great grandparents, 64 fourth great grandparents, 128. I'm gonna I'm gonna read all of it. Wow. You know I am. 128 fifth great grandparents, 256. It's going exponential, isn't it? Uh, sixth great grandparents, 512 seventh great grandparents, 1,024 eighth great grandparents. This is a big photo album, isn't it? If you've got a picture of all of them, <laughs> or a massive um, wall of photos of people, wall of family. Yeah, 2,048 ninth great grandparents for you to be born today from 12 previous generations. You needed a total of 4,000. And 94 ancestors over the last 400 years. Wow. Think then for a moment how many battles, how mm. much sadness, happiness, love. Oh, hold on a minute. Let me just get that out of the way. Stories and hope for the future that wow. your ancestors. To That's going to make me cry. That's beautiful. I'm going to read yeah. it again then. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I, don't I don't see why we shouldn't be moved by that. Think if we should. Look at that. How many fat struggles? Because we, we know this, don't we, personally? You know what our yeah. lives are like, roller coaster ride. And all those other people who've gone through that before us, the struggles, how many battles, how much sadness, happiness, love stories, and hope for the future that your ancestors had to undergo for you, for you, talking to you to exist in this present moment. You look at that. The final line of this you are the dream of many ancestors. Can, can, is there any way to post this? I will send it to you. Yeah. Uh, oh, that would be great. Thank you. I'm sure. I'm sure um, uh, that uh, James won't mind that one bit. That's superb. Thank you for that, and thank you for also for all your lovely uh, pumpkin carvings as well. Thanksgiving, then, um, Mister A uh, likes a bit of Thanksgiving. Jackie, you're saying you've been um, you've been researching it, Mrs. M. Why is that? Why, what made you look into it? Um. <clears throat> Um, I, I wanted to do a survival guide for, for people around um, Thanksgiving, <laughs> and Christmas and New Year, because yes. people tend to get like really stressed. You know, lots of people get very excited, but then lots of people get very, very stressed. And so I thought I'd have a, an astrological look at what's going on um, so that people can plan their Thanksgiving. So I, I put out a post um, to see, you know, like, obviously, I'm not American. Um, I've never been to a Thanksgiving um, kind of celebration Supper, and yeah. so i wanted to find out like you know what are you doing in the lead up to it and i actually found out that you know for some people thanksgiving starts in spring like when they go to shoot a turkey because <laughs> you can only shoot a turkey um in a particular right. part like in missouri yeah apparently you can only shoot a turkey during um mating or breeding season or something right i don't um, think jackie did that looking by the no <laughs> so, you know, i heard from so many different people about you know how they start it and obviously i wasn't going to take the astrology right back to spring yeah i've missed that boat um yeah so i i was just really trying to find out what kind of stresses there were for people um, but that is that is a notable association is it is it, it can be quite it's, it's, it's to do with this thing well, if you think you're enlightened spend three days with your family sort yeah of thing. i mean that's yeah. the thing that really came up that um it, it sounds a, a lot like what we call christmas yes um yeah uh and it's exactly the same that's a great insight yeah. and um and you know what i hear is a lot of people you know they they're deciding between their family members what each of them is going to bring um but usually somebody is doing more of it um somebody said you know um because most thanks you know most people go home for thanksgiving and so they also check out and hang out with their old school friends and things like that so yeah. that's part of it as well part of the fun um and it also got me thinking so i said to carl you know I, i've said it to you in the past as well you know what about expats that have come over that, well, yeah. that can't go home yes um you know what's what's their thanksgiving going to be like you know what kind of support can we provide for people um you know who who because it's three weeks away and, and carl was like it's three weeks away because like we never you know, do we never do forward planning of no, this kind, i mean do we, we? we don't really do forward planning particularly but right. From what I've heard from the people that were chatting um, and sharing their Thanksgiving ideas, um, a lot of Americans are already planning it. Yeah, okay. You know, so there is a run-up, is there, Jackie? So, you know, what about, you know, people who are Americans living over here? Yeah. Um, so that's all I wanted to bring to well, the table. Well, what, what's the general tone then, astrologically, where where we, where we it finds itself in, in the, uh, you know, in a celestial sense uh, and uh, what, what people can expect or how they might prepare? Okay, well... Um, 
what I would say is, is prepare yourself to um, be light. <laughs> yeah. Because actually November is pretty dicey in terms of astrology. It's it's very, very intense at the moment. And a lot of people are doing a lot of um, soul searching. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a very, very intense time astrologically. Um, so actually my recommendations are, you know, I, I've broken down from the 20th right the way through to, to the 26th. When are the right times to engage the children, the older people? So I was talking about different opportunities to work with different parts of the family. I think the older people are going to be some of the ones that struggle the most. Um, it, it feels more confusing for them this year um, from the astrology. I can um, just imagine old people struggling at Thanksgiving. If it's anything like the UK Christmas, it's like they're going to be saying things like, you can't say that anymore, can you? And then they and say like, it, and then it, the whole family gets upset with <laughs> yeah. them saying the thing yeah. they can't say anymore. I mean, um, the context, you know, like the political, um, social context have changed really, really quickly. Yeah. And I can see that there's a lot of um, bridge building that could take place in in this Thanksgiving. But what I was, you know, I mean, you can listen to the update. It's on Feel Good Astrology. Just go to my channel there okay. on YouTube. But if um, if you are doing a big do or if you're going yourself to a big do, um, I've given you some sort of, I guess, what tasks. Pointers? Like pointers, emotional, psychological tasks you might choose to do in the run-up and then after. Because the post, the post Thanksgiving is actually more potent. And I, and I see that people are going to be full of ideas, so I think it's going to be churning a lot of a lot of stuff. And of course, if you're foreign, uh, not foreign, but like if you're in another country, yeah, displaced as it were. Yeah, if you're feeling yeah. displaced, that churning could be much more intense. So um, yeah, I've I've made some recommendations. Thank you for that. You can't help the Canadians <laughs> and, um, apparently. Their Thanksgiving no, was three weeks ago. Didn't yeah, know that. Okay. I had no idea. Um, right. And then I'm going to do the same for Christmas and New Year as well. So well, help um, is at hand. <laughs> Astrologically. Um, These are very churning times. This, Lots of change this, going is, on. this is really nice. Thank you, everybody, for your input, including this tea duck. Thanksgiving is a day for remembering why you don't hang out with your family for the rest of the year. It's a bit cynical. Um, and there's a big Thanksgiving expat dinner in Aveiro every year. That's lovely. Anything happening expats Portugal was? I suspect on the forum there'll be people inviting each other who are, are displaced in this way. Uh, Jackie, perhaps? I, I. But I just mentioned this actually to um, Jerry and Astrid, and I said, I'm not going to be there that day. <laughs> that's all I said. Um, but I, I, that's a good question. I mean, that is something he might want to post. I, yeah. I personally think the U.S. turnout will be light. And Astrid said, she goes, no, no, it happens earlier in the day for them. It's not dinner. But a lot of people have... Thanksgiving dinner in the afternoon, it's lunch, or they're watching football, or, you know, and I, I really, really related, thank you for your comments um, about Thanksgiving, because our youngest son is making a decision about seeing, because he's in the US, his family on Nantucket. I don't know if you ever heard of a place called Nantucket, but he has family well, that live there. Nantucket because of the, all the filthy poems that are based upon it. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. <laughs> and everyone wears that stupid T-shirt when you're there. And um, so, and I, I thought it was really interesting. And, you know, he's young. He's 23 years old. So I was, I really appreciated the decision he made. Because he knows his family really wants him. They really love him there. But they're so contentious towards each other. And oh, that's what's, yeah, they're that's great awesome. to him, but terrible to each other. And he calls them, especially three of them, he calls them the trifecta. I hope they never see this because all they do is die. <laughs> you never so, know. But I really do appreciate that at 23 he he so um feels such obligation to his family yeah. Yeah, yeah, that he's good. willing like he knows it's going to be torture i mean he's going there with the expectation that he will be tortured but that he knows that they love him. him oh yeah well, well I'll send a, you a lovely link. sense of duty well, I'll, <laughs> I'll, send of duty. <laughs> I'll send him a link to my update <laughs> yeah could, he's yeah, gonna I mean, it's need it being prepared isn't it yeah um, i did um recommend like oh, for sorry. people who um who are going to a thanksgiving um and who you know who i think this is this is one of these months ahead where um having a purpose is really important so that we're not left idle with our thoughts and our emotions and things like that yeah so i think if he's got if anyone's got a skill a skill that they're happy to share 
um, a dish, maybe not a dish, but like anything of them that they can that they can really put into um, the celebrations and the festivities that nobody else has got. I think that's really really helpful at this at this moment. Like a time. celebration of the di yeah. diversity of the family. Yeah, perhaps. and 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 to go with a packet of cards in the back of your pocket. So that's a great that's idea. Conversations. You just say, "Oh, that's that's an interesting thought." I'm going to thrash you, you know at what? Uno instead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then okay. we'll talk about it after, and then just get everyone playing. I think the more distraction, people can distract and play. And, and stick away from all the really tough stuff. That and booze, but only the right amount. <laughs> okay. Yeah, one of the days is particularly boozy. Okay. So it, it, the day before Thanksgiving is very boozy. Good Watch on you, bye, Randy. There is definitely, <laughs> if you want to make your way to Aveiro, if you're not in the area, oh, you wow, might, you might nice. have a lovely trip up there. The Venice of Portugal, of course, um, and a Thanksgiving dinner. It's Saturday the 18th of November at the Restaurant Cinco Reich. Uh, the, the Five Kings restaurant in Aveiro, uh, put on by Aveiro expats and friends. Jackie, we've been keeping you far too long here. Are you are, are you happy to, to learn a little bit about Paul de Deus uh, with us now? Oh, please. Wait, <laughs> clotted cream is my new thing. Oh. I don't even know what is the difference between clotted cream and butter. Do you know what? I want to know. Where can we get clotted cream here? Because um, just as a little side um, note, it's our son's birthday tomorrow. And um, he's asked me to make scones. And our good friend Dee is coming around and she's going to teach me for the second <coughs> time. So she's going to teach me how to Those make scones. scones were good or scones. Yeah, scones, yeah, scones according to where say. you are in the UK. But yeah. Um, yeah. Well, can you explain to Jackie the difference between butter and clotted cream then? Well, like clotted cream is, oh, it's just heaven. Yes, um, absolutely. It doesn't taste as salty as butter does. Um, well, they don't put salt in it. Yeah, and, and it's it's white and it's thick. It's definitely it looks, more creamy than looks, buttery, it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's like, like like melty, like brie, melted brie or something. It looks it looks like that, but it doesn't have a crust on. Well, it can have a, like some of the clotted cream in in Devon. Yeah, it does. It, it, it does it, have it, a crust. It can crystallize into fat, which yeah. is, makes it even nicer. I know. <laughs> it's just, it's so good. Um, I always feel very satisfied after having a lot of that. You do. Actually, funny <laughs> funny enough, talking about Day of I the Dead. I wonder where we can get it from, because I'd love to have some for our little... GB yeah, well, store in Kishkais has it. Does it? Okay, I, I, don't think I'm, I don't I don't. don't think I'm going to have to get there today, <laughs> tomorrow. No, we might have to make our own. We might have to make How our do we own. do that? I don't know. I've got don't some kefir just, going don't, off in the don't back you just, Yeah, don't you just do one of your fermentations. <laughs> no, okay. no. Right. Um, uh, yeah, and, and on that note, um, given that it's uh, All Souls, Day of the Dead, uh, my, my, my dad slipped through the veils at oh this time goodness. of year. Oh, my goodness. Yes, he did. On the 2nd, or oh, 3rd of November. And he loved clotted cream. So that would be a wonderful tribute to him. He used to sit and eat it. He didn't bother putting it on scones or anything. He just he used to spoon it yeah. out of the tub straight in and eat the whole... <laughs> <laughs> the only one worried about things like cholesterol right um became severe then today before you go jackie thank you for, for spending so much time with us this morning it was, it was a pleasure it was my pleasure Deus, uh, bread for god is the portuguese wow. tradition of souling celebrated all over portugal named for the soul mass cakes given to the poor on all saints day so you may see that um happening in uh, portugal and here are some pictures of the lovely they look like my scones from last week they do don't they nicely dusted there would have been a, uh, maybe some caster sugar they do look nice don't they they look i i would eat one of those right now can i just go and buy a load of those and say i pretended i made scones for digby uh you could try that you could try that um, <laughs> i like that because it's got the lovely little bit of um linen going on with it. or is that a plate but some sort of portuguese yeah. graphics going on there um and uh, oh yeah that's given us an idea. It's like subliminal advertising. So what are you going to be doing uh, after the show then, Jackie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. I'm starving. So, and you know, so that, the, the coconut, that's what I think is so interesting. Is that what it is? Yeah, it's got coconut. Oh. It's yeah. coconut. And I love coconut. I don't know how coconut even came to Portugal, but it's a really good idea of Balda Dios. Yes, and uh, Owen's promising to make some live on air one day. That is fantastic. Yes, we'll take that offer. And Pete, if you need a turkey, he has a homegrown turkeys. Pete, how many have you got? He'll leave them stuff them for you, I suspect. So, Pete, ah. tell us tell us more about 